And we're back with another episode of Let's Play King's Quest 2 Romancing the Stones. I'm your host, the RPG Guy. And when we last left off, we have arrived inside this castle of darkness. Place that's clearly got to be the home of. You would rather keep your hands to your. You take the shovel go. into your possession. Uh, we are inside an evil dungeon, so to speak, for lack of a better term, as we are now traversing through it, hopefully to solve the greater story here of what's going on in this dark, dank castle. <laughs> well, you know what? Hold on. We got one thing, two things actually. You have. But let's get, let's do these few things first. These couple of things first. Oops. Uh, play. Do, 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 do. That's the candle. You can't use that. You hold your candle up to the blazing torch. It catches. Your candle is now lit. That's what we need. Or it's going to be quite a doozy of a time traversing a dark castle. The portraits on the wall depict the couple who once lived here. They look young and proud. Behind the mask of apathy that comes with aristocracy, there's a certain kindness in their eyes. You a bit strange of a thing to say, is it not? All right, let's go ahead and head on up. Go ahead. Kind of across the way here. The staircase beyond is very dark. Fortunately, your candle provides just enough light to see where you are going. Come on, there we go. Right, before we get too far, once we get down to the bottom here, let's go ahead and... Uh... You are pleased. You're adventuring close. Hold on. The black cloak. You remove the black cloak again. There are reasons for doing this. There is no reason not to. But there, I mean, well, okay. There's a reason why I do the things I do. <laughs> Nervously, you lift the heavy lid of the elegant coffin. You peek into its red satin interior. The coffin is unoccupied, and you feel relief wash over you. Before we get too far here. As you prepare to look inside the coffin. King Graham, I presume. You turn on your heel. There, blocking the only exit from this dismal room, stands the Count. His skin is pale. His color is jet black. He wears a black cloak nearly identical to the one that you possess. You know me? Ah, yes indeed. Sister Hagatha alerted me to your arrival, dear king. Guy looks kind of familiar. Desperate to stall for time, you query the Count. Sister Hagatha, you say? Who is she? The Count regards you with a suspicious glare. Though I suspect you already know the answer, Hagatha is a charming mage who does as she pleases in this land. Strange. I was not aware a new ruler had been elected. Do not be foolish. Hagatha has no interest in the politics of this wretched place. Nor do I, in point of fact. Death tends to diminish one's taste for power. No. At present, she is interested only in one thing, as am I, your destruction. Seems like a nice fellow. Let's uh, just leave him up. Oh, God. Oh. In an instant, you are flat against the wall. The Count has you pinned so well you can't move a muscle, much less put up a defense. Well, coming out into this fetish, uh, You can bro. feel the Count's iron-cold hand on your throat. You have barely seconds before the inevitable happens. 
the Count snatches the cross key from you and to your complete surprise, kisses it. A sarcastic grin flickers on his face for a moment. God bless Colima. Well, that, that didn't help us. Uh, try this. With difficulty, you manage to loosen the ruby ring from your finger and drop it to the floor. The Count's eyes dart to it quickly, then flash angrily back to you. Where did you get that? The elderly woman who lives in a house to the south of here, near the beach. She gave it to me for helping her. The Count regards you for a moment. His dark eyes bore unendingly into yours, and you feel as if your very soul is bare. What do you know of her? She is not well. I know. Do you think I am not aware of that? You are sweating profusely. The plot thickens. The vampire doesn't find the odor appetizing. Night is the most dangerous of times for my mortal family. I have kept constant vigil over my wife for many years so that from the darkness, no harm would come to her. When her time comes, we will be together forever. I think tonight will be the night. I have seen her this very eve. I did what I could to help her, but I do not think it was enough. Well, shit. The more you know, that's for sure. As you watch the giant bat fly out of the room, you remember that the Count confiscated your crucifix. Without it, you are trapped in this castle. Now, what are you going to do? All right, get what we came here to freaking get. That's for starters. You peer into the ornate coffin, finding it unoccupied. You see that the interior is lined with a shiny red satin. At what? long last, you have located the final gem, the death gem. Sweet. Breathe deeply, reach out, and take the stone in your hands. It is ice cold to the touch, but you don't care. This is the last thing you need to unlock the door of destiny. Now all you have to do is get out of here. Easier said than done, right, guys? Let's get moving. Oops. Ah. So it's interesting, the vampire and the old lady have some history. But remember, he wasn't a vampire when they first met, and she was with child. And, and then we find out, you know, some, a little bit of the background of her family, and none of it's good. It's very saddening. It's very messed up when you really think about it. Again, if I haven't said it in this in this particular Let's Play, I love the remake. The music's remastering is quite good. Seeing no other possible escape route, you climb onto the ledge and carefully lower yourself outside, hoping to find a decent foothold. It is a long way down. All right, let's skedaddle. Because you know how it is in Sierra games. Climbing down a wall is usually not a problem whatsoever. We're, we're going to die. <laughs> oh, God. They're driving us bats. Suddenly, you hear a switching noise in your ear. It's joined by two others. Oh no! You instinctively try to brush whatever it is away, but in doing so, lose your hold on the bricks and fall backwards. And thus, that is the end of King Grant. Time slows as you <laughs> fall, and your world turns black. How oh, lovely. Power of boners compels him. 
while taking a poo. To find a bunch of whores. I mean, romancing the stone is really romancing King Graham's bone. Let's just leave it at that. I mean, give it. Our guest has awoken, my love. <laughs> ah, good evening. She sounds kind of funny. I do not believe we have been properly introduced. I am Count Kaldor, former lord of the realm of Colima. May I present? Uh -oh. Did the game? The game has glitched. <laughs> A pleasure to see you again. In gratitude to you for alerting me to my wife's grave condition, I took the liberty of preparing you a dish. I thought you might be hungry after your harrowing adventure at my window. You will forgive us if we do not join you. Our tastes differ from yours, do they not, my darling? You shudder to think of what different tastes actually mean, but for some reason you note that you can no longer hear any rats squeaking in the distance. Indeed, so much to become accustomed to. Ah, you shall have all the time that the world has to share to grow accustomed to such things. Well, perhaps 30 years. Should the father locate the item by then, there might not be enough world left for anyone afterwards. With his, what, with, has this father to do with why you frequently went abroad, always with that cloak of yours? Most certainly, but I think that my affiliation with him and his association has come to a close. My obligation to him took me away from my beloved too often. I do not wish to repeat that mistake. You are forgiven, my love. Their attention, which seems to have been wavered momentarily, now redirects back to you. I'm sorry the music cut out. I'll fix it, you know, as soon as we get a chance to. But clearly, it's glitched out. Well, well, well. What to do with this one? What were you going to do with him? Kill him. I had quite clear instructions from Hagatha, who had apparently received them from the father himself. But if you are not, as you say, affiliated with this with his association anymore, they both share a knowing smile. Tell us, King Graham, why are you here in Kalima? You take a deep breath, trying to ignore the fact that you are the only one capable of doing so, and relate your story to the vision to so story of the vision of the magic mirror and your quest to find three gems of nature. The count and the countess exchange cryptic smiles, romancing the stones. Title drop, indeed. Obviously, that was a private joke, as you did not understand it. So your search for the one with which you would share the rest of your life. One that on that I cannot fault you nor on your intentions here. Therefore, I can forgive the trespassing. However, there is a matter of the dark gem you wish to remove from my castle. The death gem, rather. It sucks that it glitched out like that. I place a deal before you. I am looking for a magnificent sapphire crusted tiara. It is a valuable family heirloom and has been on this, this estate for centuries. This castle and its estate are old, though. It could be virtually anywhere in any number of hiding places. I suspect there are many that even I am not aware of. I wish to present this tiara to my wife as a gift to commemorate the eternity we shall spend together. If you can find it and bring it to me before sunrise, then I'll give you the gem you seek and your freedom. You nod, unable to believe that you have virtually been ushered away from death's door just so you can run an errand for a couple of vampires. You do not want to think about the consequences if you fail to meet the deadline. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to make a little save. We'll call this one dinner time. Um, and then let me see if I can fix this little glitch here. All right, we got the sound back. Yeah, it's a glitch. I don't know. Never, never seen that. Never have ever seen that happen before. Uh, but I've only played this remake a, a handful of times versus the original, so keep that so, in mind. I have until just before sunrise to retrieve this tiara. That is correct. And if I am unable to before that time, the count's eyes glint red as he looks directly into your own. For your own sake, I shall hope that you are successful. 
You bravely suppress a shudder. It seems clear that you are not off the hook yet. Pardon my asking, but as the Countess of this realm, I presume you have lived in this castle before now? Yes, that is so. Then how did you come to live in that old house by the sea? After my husband died, I continued to live in the castle for a time. I watched my newborn son grow into a man, marry, and have a child of his own. Possum. Yes. Shortly after her birth, however, my son and his wife both befell a tragic end at the hands of... The Countess looks pained and appears unable to continue. Sounds I a bit strange. if I have caused you to relive your grief. A vampire cannot truly feel grief, but perhaps my wife still recalls hers. I shall continue for her, if you so wish. Yeah, I kind of want to know what happened. Please, if I may know, how were your son and daughter-in-law lost to you? They were slain by the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood? You have met them at the church. Your mind reels, so that is the connection. Oh god, we're stuck in Twilight. <laughs> Why would the Brotherhood kill your heirs? Oh. As you have just guessed, the Brotherhood wish an end to the reign of my family. Why else would they give you the means to penetrate my domain so that you could do their dirty work for them? The cross key. Exactly. Stolen from me through stealth and their own brand of magic. The Counts of Colima have all descended from a single bloodline. We have always been partial to change as opposed to the stagnating status quo of the Brotherhood. Over the last few decades, the Brotherhood have tried to dispose of my family as best they could. That which I am now was brought about by them. They were the ones who set the monstrous, infected bat upon me. Long have I cursed my ineptitude. I should have used magic to defend myself. Do not be so hard on yourself, my dear. I remember that night well. That hideous creature gave you no chance. Perhaps. But I should have awoken from my dark sleep sooner. Then I would have been able to protect our beloved son and his wife, and you would not have been forced to flee the castle, to live out your days in that wretched old house under a false identity. It was not so bad a time. Dear little possum loved it. I hope she will be as happy in her new home. She has a new life now, with no reason to fear any more. This brotherhood, are they real monks? They were once, but something happened to them. Local folklore would have you believe that Weirwood Forest is a host to certain entities, spirits of the wild they are called. And what of them? I believe the monks encountered these spirits. What occurred specifically is beyond anyone's knowledge but their own. But it is evident that the men were given the ability to transform themselves. Unfortunately, their minds were apparently transformed also. They began to believe they were destined to rule, and since have presented great danger to myself and my family. So the danger you face is not a result of some decades-old feud? Not at all, dear king, though history will likely reflect such. But, to answer your question, the members of the Brotherhood are no longer the goodly monks they once were. They do not represent their fellow brethren well. Ah, interesting. We've learned a lot. But we're gonna definitely take this ham. You take the ham from the dining table. All right, well, let's go do what he asks us to do. But before we do anything, we'll snoop around the uh, the, the, the uh, castle here.
One little area we've not checked out and what You see the? a young woman sitting on the dusty floor. She has a book in her lap entitled Little Red Riding Hood. I wish I could read this story. All the pretty words. The book tells the story of a young girl who met a wolf in the forest. The young woman's head snaps up. Her black eyes drill into your own. You mm. gasp as you realize you are looking at yet another vampire. Just how many has the Count made tonight? The young woman's lips transform from hungry to, fortunately, pleasant recognition. So you are the guest of my grandfather's house. I was hoping I would meet you again. The woman is startlingly beautiful, but in an eerie, unnatural Grandpa? way. Grandpa? You find yourself unable to speak for a moment. She does look somewhat familiar, but from where? Oh, my handsome gentleman does not recognize me? Uh, should I? You remember the basket, the soup? Mm -hmm. With a start, you recognize the young woman. She's grown and matured considerably since you last saw her. The little girl, Possum, has been transformed completely into this. She has traded her small ruby cloak for a dazzling satin robe of the same color. Are you unhappy with my appearance? No, it's just that you have me at a disadvantage. I do not know your real name. Anastasia. A beautiful name. Yes, it was one of the few things my parents left me before they died. They're probably buried somewhere on this island, as a matter of fact. What do you seek here? You explain your so far unsuccessful attempt to locate the tiara. The young woman looks thoughtful for a moment, then suddenly snaps her fingers. A discarded pile of books shift aside from the floor, and a single black book is revealed underneath. She appraises the black book with indignant incomprehension, then holds it out towards you. You take the book from Anastasia's hand. Horn of I Darkness. I don't suppose that has anything to do with it, but it must be about something important. It would appear that giant bazunga is running in this family, that's for sure. How do you feel about what the Count has done to you? I am not sure. I suppose I should be grateful. Grateful? Yes. If he had left me as I was, I would have faced the same danger that claimed the lives of my parents. The murderers hunt my family still. We will not be completely safe until they are gone. At least I now need not fear anything that prowls by night. True enough. And if you can avoid daylight altogether for the rest of eternity, you will be fine. Well, there it is. <clears throat> Alright, let's take a look at this book. This black book is entitled Sleepy Hollow. It feels lighter than its size would suggest. You open the book and are surprised to discover not pages, but a hollowed out section in which sits a silver key. The key's handle resembles the shape of a sleeping child. There also appears to be something written on the back cover of the book. Yes, I thought that might interest you. Fancy putting something like that in a book. Who ever heard of such a thing? You'd be surprised, actually. I once found a magic bowl in the middle of a forest. How odd. Not so odd as seeing leprechauns flee from a tiny plant. References to the initial game. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh... In the hollow, you can see that the inside back cover has been written on. Some words have been scrawled onto the paper. They are faded but still mostly legible. Okay. So these are riddles we have to solve. Uh, in order to not be killed. If treasures you seek dear to my heart, tales of fiction is where you must start. So the fiction section. Find first the beauty with stepsisters too. So what fairy tale do we know has that? It's got to be Cinderella. Then visit the huts, the big bad wolf blue, three little pigs. The girl with no flock will usher your way. 
Little Bo Peep. To the little old man who spins gold out of hay. That's a Rumpelstiltskin. The, those two star-crossed lovers shall be your last guide. That is uh, probably Romeo and Juliet. It's usually when we think of star-crossed lovers. They'll lead you to riches that pirates did hide. The only real high fantasy or low fantasy fairy tale story with pirates is either Peter Pan or uh, uh, Treasure Island. When you earnestly seek shall now truly be yours. Though get it part wrong and you'll be greeted by boss. That doesn't really help, does it? Uh, okay. The writing scrawled on the back cover reads, if treasure you seek. We're not gonna, I will skip that because I just read it out loud. Um. The book contains instructions, but instructions pertaining to what, I wonder? Read it to me. You do so. <laughs> Why, it's the bookcase, silly. It tells you how you'd find a book from there. You have to simply follow the directions. I am sure you will figure it out. What is Mars? Yes, indeed. What is Mars? He will not bother me, seeing as how I am not at all appetizing to him. You, on the other hand, would be precisely his cup of tea. Anastasia's face lights up suddenly. If you want, I can make you like me. That way, you'd be safe. It would have sounded to you like a generous, innocent suggestion from a sweet girl, if it did not involve large losses of essential bodily fluids on your part. You politely <laughs> decline the offer. Okay. So we're going to make a wee bit of a save here. We'll save over dinner time. Because we might be dinner time if we screw this up. So it is the order that the black book kind of alludes to here. In the hollow. Take a look. So the first... Find first the beauty with two stepsisters. Let me write this down. Let's make it easier for me to remember. Cinderella. And then, you know, three little pigs. And then we've got little Bo Peep. If we get this wrong, uh, we lose. Uh, to the little old man who spins gold rumple still skin. Uh, the two star crossed lovers. That would be Romeo and Juliet. And I believe the last one with the pirates will be Treasure Island. That's enough to get us started. The writing. All right. And if we use our eyes, you can see here, we can see the names of the books. Speaking of which, the first one is Cinderella, which is right here. Then Three Little Pigs, I believe might be down here. That, that's Billy Goat's Gruff. Gruff. So, yeah, it's very easy to screw this up. Three little pigs. And then from there, we have Little Bo Peep. I believe is one of these up here. It's little Boy Blue. Little Bo Peep. Then we look for Rumpelstiltskin. Rumple still skin. Uh, and then Romeo and Juliet, which I believe are the of the books that are up here. Uh, Romeo and Juliet.
And then, la, ah, what is that? A new book has appeared on the third shelf down. Let's take a look. Treasure Island. You've located the correct book. You pluck it from the shelf and read its title, Treasure Island. What is this? There seems to be a lock binding the cover shut. The keyhole requires a small, thin key. Now, lucky for us, that's something we probably pretty much have. Let's go ahead and use this key here. The key fits perfectly into the lock. You turn it and hear a soft click. The book is now open. Skimming through the book, you find that a map has been sketched onto the last page. Close scrutiny reveals it is a top-down layout of the castle and its surrounding grounds. According to this, the tiara has been buried near one of the graves. You shudder, hoping that this is not going to be a case of digging all night while trying to avoid unearthed zombies. Oh boy. There is also a small piece of writing near the bottom. A date of fate can be found with a first, a second, and a double of nothing. Well. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get out of here. I wish only one thing is payment for helping you find that book. Of course. Would you be so kind as to take this bracelet and place it on my mother's grave? I believe she wanted me to have it while I was alive. Now, it seems no longer appropriate to keep it. Thank you. I must retire now. It will not be long before sunrise. Good night, Graham. Good night, Anastasia. Well, that's clearly what happened to Possum, is it not? Uh, all right. Well, let's go ahead and kind of head south, shall we? And we're not done yet. We're going to do what she asked us to do. First and foremost. Oh, there are the ghosts. As you hold up the bracelet, the ghosts seem to relax slightly. You wonder if it is now safe to approach them and enter the cemetery. The ghosts seem more relaxed now that you have showed them the bracelet. You place the bracelet on the grave. It immediately sinks down into the earth. The ghosts do not respond at first. Then one of them drifts toward you. It nods, almost sadly. The ghost seems to want to say something, but appears unable. Its face, though transparent and hazy, is lined with grief and torment. Its facial features waver into focus. The ghost is female. You don't say. She understands that our daughter will never be joining us now. No longer do we need wait for her. Now we journey to the realm of the dead, where its lord waits to judge us. Farewell. You bow your head and cross your heart out of respect. While looking downward, you notice that a beautiful gold ring now lies at your feet. Okay. Grab that. You lift the gold ring from the ground and carefully place it in your pocket. All right, and before we do anything else, let us uh, observe this. It is a gold wedding band. Keep that in mind. Count Christopher Evere, 1175 to 1200. The young Avere, his time so near, said he, my dear, lend me your ear. Please do not fear. My life ends here. <laughs> well, let's make a save. Because with such a goofy name, let's go ahead and do a little digging, shall we? Because if you now, here's the thing, if you dig in the wrong location... Uh, you won't be alive very long to observe this problem. When your shovel hits something hard, 
What could it be? There is an open hole beneath one of the headstones. Yeah, just put it there. Nervously, you reach down, open the coffin, and look inside. You search through the belongings of the deceased. According to the headstone, they belong to a Count Christopher Evier. After some tentative searching, you find a parchment. It appears to be the last will and testament of Larman Adnarb, healer. Hmm, this isn't right. You run your eyes over the parchment. It's dated 1200, the same as the date on the headstone. However, the instructions pertaining to his burial were for Larman to be placed near his family at the church's cemetery. Oh, dear. That clearly doesn't help us right now, does it? So clearly now that we know where we got to go. I guess we can just go that way. And let's go back down. Come on. We'll get us back on a boat, because clearly in order for us to continue our plight, we're going to have to head back to uh, the church. You climb back into the decrepit rowboat, and the shrouded ghoul ferries you back across the lake. Let's see, and we now need to get out of the swamp, so to speak. Come on. Come on. There we go. This should take us out of the swamp, but this is a great place for us to stop for right now. So I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Studios for more live gaming action. Because when we get back, we're going to have to deal with us. We're going to have to deal with some uh, wolfy looking people who have done us a disservice. And the disservice to some people who, strangely enough, were are slightly maybe becoming allies for us. I'm not quite sure yet, but with that said, thanks for stopping by guys. And we'll see you guys next time.